it isn't all perfect. I don't have all the answers and sometimes bad things happen and I need to step away and think about it and, and work it out and move on. is going to be a very busy day just finished ginger and I've taken all the temporary fencing down which I used to fence off the area for the fun day I've done some poop picking and now I'm off to my first lesson I'm teaching or working with patients in Sabi today um, so I'm gonna to go to patients first and then to Sabi and then when I'm done there I've got to go and clean my granddad's house and then I'm gonna go and buy feed because I'm almost out and other supplies for ginger and then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to give ginger a bath and hopefully if I have time have a little play with him um, and then I'm going to go to work it's my first day back at my normal job today after my week off um, my mum's going to bring ginger in a bit later on this evening because it's just too warm for him to come in super early I start at five so he needs to be out for longer than that really um so he's back on full days out now which is really exciting um he was in for just over a month overall with his mud fever um but now it's all dried out he's out all day long which he's so pleased about he's only out during the day at the moment he's coming in at night still um because there's still quite a lot of dew on the ground sort of early morning so I didn't want to risk that um but yeah he's much happier now that he's out at least through the day bless him so but we do now have the new problem of flies oh it's not really a new problem we have the problem every summer we have a bit of a fly epidemic going on with ginger at the moment and um, he gets bitten really badly he's very sensitive but then i am as well my arms are all swollen and bruised from fly bites that i got over the weekend so your horse is your mirror So that's patience all done. I'm sorry I didn't film it for you. Um, wasn't anything particularly exciting happening today. She's had a little bit of an issue having her fly fringe on. Um, she just got a little bit sensitive around her ears. She didn't really want it on, and she'd gone up, well, gone backwards a couple of times with Rona. So we were just kind of working on that, getting her really nice and relaxed with that again. Um, we made some good progress but I think we kind of worked out that the she actually needs the next size up in the fly fringe I think it's actually a little bit too tight because once we got it on properly I'm sort of having a look and I think it just doesn't quite fit properly so that could be causing her to be a little bit unhappy about it so so it wasn't a particularly exciting lesson today so I wasn't too worried about getting it filmed for you but I'm gonna go and get some breakfast now because I am starving it's nearly 11 o'clock um, I should have had breakfast before I came out but I'm one of those people who thinks if I can have an extra 10 minutes in bed I'll do that which is really bad it's not good not good habits to get into um, I have been getting better at that but today I just didn't want to get out of bed 
So I'm gonna go and get some breakfast and then I'm going to go and work with Sabi. was an absolute star as usual I don't think she's ever not she's just fab um, I didn't ride her because as I was driving in I noticed that all the cows are out um, in the fields along the drive which I've not taken her past the cows before so I wasn't really sure what she was going to be like so I thought I'll play it safe we'll just go out in hand today um, and then maybe next time I can ride her because actually she was fine the only time she jumped a little bit was when they all decided they were going to run behind us which is fair enough but she settled straight back down again I think she's she's been here a good few years now and obviously they go out every summer so I think she's kind of used to seeing them by now but I just wanted to be sure and um, because she's a baby I want to try and make sure we're doing everything right and just being calm and patient with her so yeah I'm glad we did that today so then next time I can ride her so I'm gonna go and clean my granddad's house now and he hopefully would have cooked me lunch I'm sure he would have done um, and then go get feed go and see ginger play with him bath him and then go to work real footage of me playing with Ginger because it's quite hard to play with a horse and film at the same time and whenever I've done it before and set my camera up on a fence I've been in like a small field a paddock or something whereas this field is fairly huge I'd say it's about well the bit I'm playing in is maybe 10 acres 10 acres I reckon um, and we're kind of using all of it because as you can imagine he's got quite a bit of energy after not really doing um, anything for a month well not doing anything at all for a month and before that because um, how wet the winter was and we haven't got a menage yet he didn't really do a lot before that either so he's got a lot of energy I have to always remind myself with him like he's not fit because he's had a month of standing in I know we were going for little walks and things but not enough to keep him fit but he's a horse who just always looks fit just regardless he kind of somehow keeps himself looking so fit he never you know he's always got so much muscle just regardless um he always looks like a fit horse and he can go like a fit horse like he could canter around this field a hundred times and not be tired he's just it's just him <laughs> um so obviously i have to be careful and remind myself that he's had a lot of time off and i can't let him do too much all he wants to do is run everywhere and jump everything and do flying changes and stuff like that but we can't really do that yet <laughs> because he's not fit however many times he'd like to tell me he is where are you going oh clever boy that's a good boy can you get four can you oh, oh. we did it got four feet on I just had to use both hands to ask him it was really hard holding a camera at the same time hi guys so I wanted to talk to you about something that happened on Wednesday um, I wanted to film this Wednesday night but I just wasn't really in the best sort of mind frame to come and film it and talk to you about it. I knew I needed to kind of go away, really think about it. 
and then kind of come back to it and I'd be able to sit here and discuss it with you. Um, and then yesterday was just really busy. I just didn't have time to do anything yesterday. So here I am now. Um, so to give you a little bit of a kind of background on it, when I started vlogging, I'd watched um, quite a few different vloggers on YouTube. Not really any horsey ones because I hadn't really found any horsey ones at that point. Um, but just a few that kind of gave me the bug for it, kind of got me interested in giving it a try. And um, what kind of really sparked my interest was just how positive their vlogs were and how inspired I would feel after watching them and just kind of wanting to get out there and do something. And um, no matter what that was, you know, as I say, what they weren't specifically horsey ones, but just something that just gave me a little bit of a, like, push to go out and live my life kind of thing, which is always good. Um, so that's kind of what got me into it. And then as I started vlogging, I started watching more, I found some horsey ones. And I found that there's kind of two different types of vloggers. You've got those people who are really positive, really inspirational. They just show like this amazing life and just make you want to be like them, um, which I do think you need sometimes. Um, but then also you've got the other side, which is very honest and um, doesn't seem to be that many people who are that honest, I feel. Like when I now when I watch people who everything is always positive and always is great, I think you're not really showing us everything and that's fine that's absolutely fine because obviously people want to keep things private they want to keep things more personal and that's I'm not saying that's wrong at all um but I guess what I am saying is that it's not always that real and I think some people that I've watched I've kind of thought oh their life is so perfect and amazing and why isn't mine like that kind of thing and actually that can make you feel quite rubbish um not through the fault of the person, as I say, there's no problem with that whatsoever. It's how you take it when you watch it. And I'm definitely guilty of that. You know, I see people on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, and they're just living this most amazing life. But then I step back and I think about it and I think actually, they probably do have stuff going on, they just don't show it, which is fine. But you do get that other side of YouTube, that other side of Facebook, whatever, and you get the vloggers and the bloggers who are really honest. And I'm now watching a lot more of those and reading a lot more of those blogs, um, and watching their videos because I feel like I can relate to that more and I feel like I'm actually engaging with that person rather than just kind of the idea of what they want to give you. Um, so I kind of think that that's the direction I want to go with my vlogs. I want it to be honest, I want it to be a true representation of my life, about everything that goes on, about, um, you know, the life of a horse trainer instructor but also the life of Naomi and what that means and how it all kind of fits together because I feel like that is a lot more beneficial to people. So with that in mind, something happened on Wednesday, uh, which wasn't great. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about it because I want to be honest, but also because I want you to realize, um, and this always sounds weird to me, I hate calling myself a professional because I don't feel like I'm a professional. I feel like I still do this for fun. In fact, sometimes I, you know, people will say to me, oh, you're going to work today. And I'll say, no, I've got the day off, but actually I'm teaching all day. But to me, that's not work, which is really strange. And I need to maybe change my mindset on it. But at the same time, it keeps it fun. So, but I, I really struggle to call myself a professional, but I guess I am. So what I wanted to show is that even as a professional, things go wrong. Things don't always go the way you want them to. Um, and then when things go wrong, I don't always handle it in the best way. Um, it isn't all perfect. I don't have all the answers and sometimes bad things happen and I need to step away and think about it and, and work it out and move on. So on Wednesday, my plan was to go to the yard and bring Ginger out, take him for a play and then give him a bath. Unfortunately, I didn't have a huge amount of time. I had what I thought was enough time and I think that's where I went wrong. And I don't even know why I thought that because I never think that way. I do like to have my day planned out, but I never think like I have two hours to spend with my horse and this is what I'm gonna do in it. If I have two hours to spend with my horse, if I have like a set time, then I probably won't plan things in that time. I'll just allow it to happen and see where things go because I do find that if you like are too rigid in your plans, things go wrong. And this is where it went wrong. So I don't know why I thought that, but I just, I guess because 
you know, he's had a month off. I was so excited to get out and play with him again. I've got all these ideas of what I want to do with him. And I just want to like start going somewhere with him again and doing things. And I wanted to bath him because it was really hot. I knew the hot weather, weather wasn't going to last. So I guess that's why I just got very direct line in my thinking, which I tell people not to do, but here I am doing it. Um, so I went down, I went to catch him and he didn't want to be caught, which is very rare for my horse, but that had happened, that was the third day that that had happened. I'd walked into the field and he walked away from me. And I kind of have been putting it down to the fact that he's only just gone back out after being on box rest and all his friends are out there. And why would he want to come back in? But then on Wednesday when this happened, my first thought before I thought anything else was, oh, this is gonna eat into my time. Like trying to catch him is going to eat into my time. He took about 30 seconds to catch. It really wasn't that big a deal. But I'd already kind of set this negative ball rolling at that point. Um, so I brought him in and it was fine. And I took him out to the playground to play with him. And he was very on his toes. He was very nervous. And I kept that in mind while I played with him. You know, I didn't ask too much of him. I just kind of planned to just get him calm and relaxed, which we did, so that was good. As soon as I got him back onto the yard, he his energy changed again. He went from being quite calm to being quite nervous again. And I know what's happened, it's because he's, you know, he's been on box rest for a month, he's gone back out, he's with all his friends again, and now we seem to have this sort of separation anxiety thing going on. Um, because he's obviously, you know, got back together with all his friends again and now he doesn't want to leave them. So it's completely understandable. I wasn't thinking this though when it happened. This is why I had to go away and really think about it before I came to talk to you about it. Um, because when it was happening, I was just thinking, what, you know, why is my horse so upset? He's never like this on the yard. You know, I was just kind of getting stressed about the whole situation. I wasn't angry at him, um, but I was stressed about it. And I, you know, when you know how things normally are, um, and then, you know, it starts all sort of going on in your head where you're like, oh my gosh, this month of box rest has completely changed things. This is what it's going to be like now. Of course he's not. Of course this is all going to, you know, he will get back to normal. It's just a process. Things have changed for him again. It's completely understandable. But when you're in the situation, you don't always think that way. I should have helped him. I should have got him calm and then turned him back out. But I didn't. I bathed him and he wasn't happy about it. He was very tense. He was spinning around. He didn't enjoy it at all. And the problem was, by the time I sort of realised I was going about this all wrong, I'd kind of got the shampoo all in and I needed to rinse him off before I could turn him back out again anyway. So we kind of had to just get it done. And I hated it. I hated that feeling. And then I turned him back out and he ran away from me at such speed to back to his friends. And I took it very personally, which maybe I was the right thing at that time because I needed to kind of be like slapped around the face of like, Naomi, wake up, what are you doing? So then I went home, I was late, I got back, had a quick shower, got changed, went to work and spent the whole evening feeling like pure rubbish because I felt like I'd let my horse down, I felt, felt like I'd let myself down. I always feel like I've let my students down, which is such a silly thing because obviously my students weren't there watching. Um, but I just feel like I have because it, these are things that I would tell people not to do and then I go and do them. Um, and I really had to think about whether I was going to film this and talk to you about it because it's quite a kind of big thing for me to discuss, you know, you, no one ever wants to talk about when things go wrong and when they do things wrong. I'm going to go out this afternoon and I'm going to try and fix the situation that I created. And I'm literally just going to go out and sit in the field with him and just see if he wants to come and hang out with me. I'm not going to ask anything of him, I'm just going to chill out with him and just just see what happens kind of thing, let him decide. This has kind of given me a bit of a wake up call that I need to go back to really looking after my relationship with my horse. And I wanted to discuss it with you because I just thought it, when I was learning, when I was a student, I'm still a student, I'm still learning all the time, but before I was an instructor, I really thought that when things went wrong, it was just me and it was because I was at the level I was at or it was because I wasn't good enough. I just felt like the professionals, as silly as it sounds, it was all just going right for them all the time. Um, and it clearly wasn't, it clearly never is. Like, you know, everyone has bad days, everything, you know, things get on top of people, things go wrong. I just 
feel like it's important for me to talk about these things and that's the kind of direction I think I want these vlogs to go in. Not to be negative at all. And most days everything's fine, everything's great, I have a lovely time, it's not a problem. But just occasionally these things are gonna happen and I just thought it was important to tell you guys so that you know that it happens to everyone. And if you have a bad day, if you mess something up with your horse, it's not just you and it's not the end of the world. You can fix it, you can go out there and fix it. I think you do get to a stage where, you know, I've had him for a long time, we've got a pretty good relationship going, um, we can do a lot together. Maybe I've got to the stage where I'm not doing the things that I should do, I'm not doing those real relationship building things. I'm just kind of expecting for him to behave himself and be for him to be confident and for him to want to come with me everywhere. That's not the case, he's still a horse, he's still a prey animal and I have to remember that and this has given me a huge wake up call to go out there and really like really care about him and about us and make sure I am putting the relationship first with him. The good thing is now as well, I've really kind of been thinking about it a lot and I've got a bit of a plan set in place as to what I'm going to do. Not just today, but going forward, how am I gonna fix this situation? We obviously have a bit of separation anxiety going on, so I need to take a step back from what my plans were and actually go and deal with this now. So you have to take a positive from everything that happens and that's a huge thing that I'm really trying at the moment. If something bad happens, if something you know, goes wrong, it doesn't go to plan, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's not necessarily a negative, you can pull a positive from it and you can always learn something from it and that's not always easy and that's why sometimes you need to kind of give yourself time. I couldn't have thought this way on Wednesday at all because I was frustrated, I was stressed, I was upset. I, you know, if I'd have tried to make a plan, it would have either been the wrong plan or it just wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have been able to, and then I've just gone, I can't do it. I'm rubbish, I'm useless. So you need to kind of give yourself that time and giving myself a couple of days to really think about it and really bring myself back down to earth and back into a more positive mind frame has really helped because now actually I can make a plan and actually go out and sort this situation out and be a be that leader for my horse that he needs rather than just being kind of emotional and, and stressy about it because that's not gonna help him and that's certainly not gonna help him want to be with me rather than his friends. Um, so I feel like now I've got a plan, I've got something set in place where I can go out there and actually help him. So I hope that's kind of made sense to you. I hope you got something out of it as well. Um, I'm gonna leave the vlog here now and maybe catch up with you next week on this situation, see where we're at, see where I've kind of gone with it, see if I've kind of improved the situation at all. Um, but I fully intend to talk to you about anything like this that happens from now on, um, because I think it's important and I think, I always try and think like the whole time when I'm teaching, when I'm um, training a horse, when I'm helping people online, when I'm doing my social media, when I'm building online courses, everything I do always in my mind is what would I have needed when I was at this stage, whoever I'm aiming it at or whoever I'm helping or whatever, whatever work I'm putting together. I always try and think of when I was at that stage or when I was learning this, what did I need from that, from my instructor or from somebody, even if I didn't have an instructor to help me at the time, what did I need? What would have really helped me? And I really feel that having someone talking this way when I was learning and when I was going through these bad times, I really feel like that would have helped. I feel like that's what I needed and that's kind of what I lacked because it's just so easy to have something go wrong and just feel like you're the only one and feel like you're not good enough. And you are, we all are, we are good enough because if we weren't, we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be learning. We wouldn't be striving to become better people for our horses. Everyone has got it in them to do amazing things, but we're all gonna have these bad days. And part of it is accepting that that's gonna happen, but a huge part of it is actually dealing with it and the way we deal with it and how we move on. So thank you for watching guys. I hope you've all had a good week and I will see you next Sunday.